But our feature match this round is going to be two players that we've seen already. Our hammer player from last round, who uh, was the commentator from yesterday. Uh, what was their name Christian again? Hafner. Christian Hafner. Hafner. And then we're going to be playing against Ryan Hayes, who's on the breach or combo list breach deck that we've been talking about all day. So should be a pretty fun match. We're going to get out all that set up for you, get you the life totals and everything before we get down there. Um, so this matchup specifically, Hammer versus Creativity with uh, or not uh, hammer versus breach with a ton of interaction we saw it multiple times already today this is i think the third time that ryan has played against the archetype do you think he can take it down three times well it's it's gonna be a lot and certainly uh you know chris hafner played that last match beautifully yeah. so i i think uh he's gonna have access to those spell pierces which may come into play here uh, we'll see what this match is going to look like. But uh, the other thing that's different about Chris's list is he has Cauldron Complete. Okay. Where Ryan's uh, opponent in round one did not. And I think that's going to be a big card in the matchup. Awesome. Uh, from the, uh, the Hammer side of things, I think that priority is going to be uh, making sure that you have a threat on turn one or two. You can't keep any hand. It's just a bunch of spell pierces and reactive stuff. you got to really apply pressure and make the the blue red player play your game you got to make them interact with you yeah. and if you don't do that they're just going to run you over with dragon race channeler and shredder while they play a bunch of considers and bobbles and just beat you up um you know we we saw a really tight game from the breach player a few rounds ago where they could post combat or pre-combat right eat their graveyard with breach to make sure the dragon race channeler can block a flyer yep I'm curious if that's going to come up again. That seems like that's something that is just going to happen a bunch when you play against Hammer over and over. Those Ingmoth Nexuses are very scary, and having as many defensive measures against them as possible seems like a, a winning line. Yeah, definitely. The, the Breach player is certainly going to be on the back foot here, or, or at least ideally from, from the side of the Hammer player. Yeah. But uh, I believe we're just about ready to go down to the match. Yeah, let's go ahead and cut down to the table. We got... Uh, Hafner on your right playing Hammer, and Ryan Hayes on your left playing Breach. Comboless Breach. Comboless Breach? Well, we just need a, a better name for yeah, it. Yeah, we really do. Breach Nonbo. <laughs> Breach Nonbo. Yeah. Breach Nonbo. That's what we're calling it, because it's not a combo. Get it changed. I want it. Breach <laughs> Nonbo is the name. <laughs> All right, not sure who's on the play. We'll know pretty quickly here. These players are familiar with each other. Uh, Ryan comes to the store to play a bunch. He tests with TJ Radizak, local, and uh, Hafner here was, is local as well, I assume, because he was in here doing commentary last night for FNM. So. These players probably know each other. Hefner fans a handful of mediocreness. And That's also a good suggestion from the last Spartan. Oops, no combo. Oops, no combo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I forgot to put it in. Um, Pith and Needle Naming Grinding Station is a, is a good deck name as well, I think. That happened multiple times already on camera. Yeah. All right. I was going to say, I can't come up with a good portmanteau of like Underworld Snapcaster Mage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Hafner are going to be keeping the six, putting, uh, trying to figure out what to put back here. It looks like it got Sentinel Cigar Disease. Oh, is this a five? Oh, this might be a five. Oof. Five's tough. All right, I'll take keep a couple lands as for Sentinel. Well, best start as for Sentinel. Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, going to be leaning on that Stoneforge Mystic. Looks like probably going to try to go for a, an early Cauldra. And Bob will paying for Esper Sentinel. Yeah, I actually really like playing Darcy first to offer a trade. Um, you can basically play Bobble for free at another point. Like if you go bowl your creature pay one and then you can play all your bobbles after that they kind of get unlocked for free um but we need to just cycle and hit land drops and find removal and stuff i'm sure so i'm gonna go ahead and pop both draw a couple cards now what are your thoughts here on stoneforge mystic finding a hammer as opposed to something like cauldron honestly uh i don't play enough of the hammer deck to, to make an, an informed decision on the best lines for that type of thing. I think getting Cauldra specifically is something you want to do when you have no enablers in hand for Hammer. But it's, it looks like Hafner does have Pure Steel Paladin, so it's it's easily uh, able to come down next turn and 
Can't equip quite next turn, but uh, should be able to be uh, draw a card and be a threat later. Yeah, it's also an, an interesting trade-off because you know that uh, Ryan did not kill your Esper Sentinel on Ryan, right? right? So, it, so you have to kind of balance that against, all right, well, was the removal being held for Stoneforge Mystic, or does he really just not have anything? Right. Here comes the Ledgerman, the Bookkeeper, the Birdman himself, Chris Hafner's way. Saga's going to tick up to two. It's going to be threatening to be making some constructs that could be difficult for Ryan Hayes' Breach deck to overcome simply because the Breach deck uh, doesn't combo. So you actually have to fight through all that stuff or fly over it. Ledger Shredder and Dragon Rage Channel are helping you do exactly that. Yeah, it looks like just a pass back here from Hafner probably going to go on this plan of making construct at the end of Ryan's turn. And then trying to deploy maybe both the hammer and the pure steel paladin to be able to equip immediately. Yeah, I think mostly just making sure that you get full value out of Saga just makes the non combo ness just so punishing for the Jeskai Breach deck. Since they have to grind through everything, you might as well just force them to, you know. And it looks like we've got a prismatic ending here on Esper Sentinel, and it is being paid for. We're going to have a connive and a surveil as well. Yeah, good sequencing from Ryan, able to take care of most of these things uh, and get a little card selection, playing a nice defense, and able to pay the one as well. And we're going to see a construct come down at the end of the turn. And we'll see what Chris opts to do with this Saga on three. So it looks like we could float a mana and then play our uh, Seachrome Coast from hand after the... Saga dies. That'll give us our second white for Pure Steel Paladin. We'll use the Colas mana to play the hammer, and then we'll equip a hammer to the Stoneforge Mystic and the Construct and make a big attack. And that's going to force Hayes to chump block at least one time. Well, actually, I don't think that will quite work because we won't have Metalcraft if that's the line. Right? No, we tutor up an artifact here. We get that's the second artifact, oh, yeah, and then yeah. we have a hammer and no, hammer. You're absolutely right. So it looks like he's thumbing a Shadow Spear to gain some life. I really like getting a second hammer because it forces a chump block. Here, the the hammer plus the Shadow Spear, I think, is just shy of lethal. And so Hayes can just, just let the ability or let the damage go through. Yeah, I guess Hafner is uh, prioritizing the ability to turn off the chump block options. I think it uh, might be a smart one simply because of Jeskai Breach's ability to reload on removal spells. Sure, sure. So getting that trample uh, and getting this game over with as quickly as possible is uh, what Chris is opting to do here. All right, we're going to suit up both these creatures, or both of these equipment to the Construct. And it's going to rumble in for a ton of damage. We can do one more with the Ingmoth Nexus. I assume it's going to get activated. And uh, I, how much is this? So the Construct itself. Currently uh, a 3-3. Three, three. is a 3-3. Three, three, so can be a 4-4. Four, four. Four. Uh, so it's a 14-point attack at the moment. Okay. Now we're thinking about attacking with a Stone Fort as well. Okay, okay. Interesting. All right. Well, I feel like this is a pretty easy eat Stone Fort Mystic and then hope you peel... A way to kill both creatures if you don't already have it yeah i'm seeing it to ferry an expressive iteration and what looks like a lightning bolt to me in the hand for ryan hayes um, also important to note the dragon race channeler is delirious so it is a 3-3 when it blocks so we could throw ledger shredder in front of the trampler here and soak up four damage and then still eat the stone forge mystic yeah, I mean, the the big thing for Ryan on this next turn is going to be to deal with both of the uh, the Pure Seal Paladin and the token. Uh, I'm not sure if Ryan has another land in hand. Uh, so ah, Fire that... Island would get shut off if he's not careful. Oh, that's true as well. Yeah. Yeah. So the block here makes some sense. Now we'll have access to more mana next turn. Stoneforge down. We're going to be trampled over. We're going to go down to five and a big swing of life for Hafner. And we're going to go back Ryan's way and see if he can clean up these two creatures. I also just noticed that's, uh, I believe, a Tom Ross signature on that Ink Moth Nexus there. Uh, <laughs> the boss. The boss, of My course, man. being an Infect aficionado. You know, I have never seen a card in the wild that I've signed before. That's got to feel like something else, you know? Oh, yeah. It's got to be just like breaking your brain or whatever. Yeah. Tom, if you're watching, just know I love you. All right, back Hayes' way. Has Teferi Time Raveler in hand. Is going to need to draw land so he can Time Raveler bounce and bolt. 
the uh, the pure steel paladin was not uh, equipped. Actually, sorry. If uh, if the pure steel paladin was equipped by both of the equipment, I believe that the golem or the contract would have died. Yes. So uh, you can't quite protect the uh, pure steel paladin there. Yeah, it looks like Ryan missed on this land. Well, so, it still has a draw from the Teferi, though. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. I believe that's going to be the play. Ryan's going to take one off this fiery islet, drop down to four, take a peek. Uh, for Dragon Rage Channel, or it wasn't a land. And... Come on. Top card. Thinking? What are you thinking about? <laughs> bounce. There's the bounce. We'll see if there it is. Come Finds another lightning, but not that's it. not going to do it. I believe we're about to be headed off to game two. Yeah. All right, Ryan Paxton. I think that was well sequenced, but just too much pressure from the hammer deck too quickly and got bottlenecked on mana. I mean, the deck only plays, you know, 19, 20 lands most of the time. Like, you're just going to get stuck on two and three lands all the time. You're not going to hit your third, fourth, fifth land drop all, every game. Absolutely. I mean, these are two incredibly efficient decks with their mana, and so they can only necessarily go uh, so far off of just the three. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the sideboards here. Uh, so we're going to have uh, Mr. Hayes' sideboard up first. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, so Ryan has access uh, to two Monastery Mentor, two Path to Exile, two Flusterstorm, a Spell Pierce, two Engineer Explosives, two Wear Tear, two Lavinia, a Spell Snare, and I think we can assume the Gigantha's not coming in. <laughs> yeah, I, I think any time that Gigantha's in the main deck, it's because you shuffled it in on accident, <laughs> and that happens every now and then. Sure does. Uh, so... You know, we've seen Ryan play this matchup before. We're going to want all of our removal, right? All of our disenchants. Those are definitely coming in. Um, now the question is, do you want to board in things like Spell Pierce? Like, there are plenty of targets, but is that really the type of game plan you want to be implementing? So I also uh, might like the copy of Spell Snare. In yes, I do like Spell Snare because yeah. that can hit the creatures, and the creatures are the most powerful part of the deck. Absolutely. Yeah, no, we're going to see that Breach deck get a lot more interactive uh, in the second game. And so we'll go over uh, to Christian Hafner's sideboard. He's got two March of Otherworldly Light, one Blacks and a Scale, one Pithing Needle, two Spell Pierce, three Dranith Magistrate, two Paths Exile, one Ralka Progenitus, and three Sanctifier on Vec. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we saw Sanctifier on Vec do quite a bit of work in yeah. our first match of the day. I would expect that to come in again. Uh, we'll see if Chris wants these Spell Pierces as well. Uh, we could also look towards something like the Relic of Progenitus if he's more concerned with the Dragon Rage Channel Order and potentially the Breach side of things. But I think Chris is probably going to stay pretty aggressive. Yeah. Uh, I think that the Sanctifiers can play a major part in stifling uh, not only the aggression of Rogvan, but also the the Underworld Breach like crazy turns. Mm -hmm. It's not quite as impactful because you can still hit a bunch of lands and blue cards and keep the, the chain of baubles going when you have like Dragon Rage Channel Order on the table and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of hard to kill. You know, you need prismatic ending. And if you don't, like, you just get hammered out. So, GG. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, we'll see how these players uh, are going to sideboard as we get into game number two. I just want to say uh, all-star Ross Miriam is in chat, and he is talking up Mr. Ryan like he is some big time. And I think that it's just he's just right, you know? We've seen Ryan play a bunch. I don't want to inflate his ego, right? He's still young. But... I've watched him play a bunch of Magic now, and he is putting on a clinic most of the time. And uh, Ross was kind of questioning the play last round, and then Ross went through all the iterations and was like, oh, wait, no. Never mind. Yeah, for, for a second Figured there, I out. thought you said we didn't want to inflate Ross's ego. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's impossible. Yeah, yeah, we can't do that. Basically yeah. a hot air balloon yeah. head. <laughs> all right, we're going to see Ryan taking a mulligan here while uh, Chris appears to be all set with his seven. All right, I don't watch a ton of basketball, but I do know through my peripheries that the Utah Jazz traded away most of their good players at the beginning of the year. Yep. And then won a bunch anyway? Uh, yeah, I believe they've uh, leveled off a bit. Ah. Uh, I, it, I mean, I, I'm not necessarily the, the Utah Jazz uh, experts uh, in in uh, you know any sense. Is, uh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, Carl Malone. Yeah, Carl Malone. Carl Malone is absolutely uh, a Utah Jazz expert. Ross updates saying that they're hovering around 500. For okay. This season, so. That means they're under. Because he would yeah. say they're over 500 if they were over 500. <laughs> That's how Ross operates. I just want everyone to know that we're on the level there. 
All right, looks like we're getting started here. We've got to turn one Shocked Sacred Foundry into a Ragavan for Ryan Hayes. All right, turn on Ragavan. you got to imagine that you're in business with a hand of any interaction, but no creature from Hafner. That means that just a guard is aid means uh, Ragavan can start getting in damage here and generating a bunch of extra resources. Oh, and we did see Teferi picked up there for Ryan Hayes. So yeah, yeah. you could see a turn two Teferi. Against that cigar is a that's going to limit its effectiveness quite a bit. All right, we have a flood of strain in hand. Now the question is, do we want to go ahead and bounce the cigar is it? Draw a card. It looks like we're decent on stuff to do. Wear tear, expressive iteration. Using all your mana this turn makes a lot of sense, and bouncing the cigar is aid really keeps Hafner from being able to like double spell next turn. You know, like yeah, it looks like that's exactly what's happened. Also, just uh, for the record, you were correct on your Ross translation. The Jazz are 22 and 22. <laughs> <laughs> 500, he said. Would 100% say they are over 500 if they were 23 and 22? Yep. All right. Here we see Sanctifier on Vec come down. That's going to check that Ragavan pretty well. Uh, we'll see if Ryan uh, opts to play out a second to Ferry, but no, it's just going to be the Express Federation. All right, doesn't find the answer, finds a couple of dead Raghavans in a land. Going to play the land. Iteration, going to get exiled. Teferi, probably going to tick up. I would imagine Sanctifier is just going to take care of that next turn, though, since the static on Teferi is pretty powerful. And you'll likely be able to put up some amount of defense here with three mana against the Raghavan, but we'll just have to wait and see. All right, or like... lethal time? Is it lethal time? Oh. That was a pretty quick cigar to make. <laughs> That's pretty I believe smart. this is... Uh... A hammer. One okay. might say it is hammer time. Ah, uh, that, so is that where the name comes from? I believe so. See, I thought it was because the deck was paying tribute to 90s icon MC Hammer. Oh, yeah, it's the same thing. Right? To stop hammer time. Oh, but you just said it's hammer time when you played. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. What I've disconnected from reality. All my, right. My apologies. All right, are you back? I kind of need you here. All right. All right. We're down to three <laughs> life. Ryan Hay is in a pickle. Do you have an answer to Sanctuary and Vec? The answer last turn was no. This turn we can play a backup to Fairy and bounce it. We have Wear Tear where we can blow up Sigarda's Aid and the Colossus Hammer, maybe going to one, but then we're in trouble to Fire Island not being able to work. Every creature is lethal. So a lot to think about here for Hayes. Yeah, I can't actually wear tear here because that Sanctifier will just come through and deal. Oh no, we got the treasure token, right? Yeah, it'd go to one. Um well, we'll see what Ryan opts to do here. Definitely in a bind. We'll also try to get confirmation on what that pithing needle is naming. It's always grinding station. Oh, uh, it's always grinding station? Yeah. All right. Uh, it looks like uh, Chris named Teferi Time Raveler. Well, that's going to break the one in hand, so we might yep. need to have a wear tear on the pithing needle, but I don't think that that's going to do a whole lot. Uh, no, it'd be a little short of being able to survive if you were to take that line. All right, well, Ryan, what you got for me, brother? We could take the Hail Mary. We go kill Hammer, kill Saga. Kill Hammer, kill Saga. Hope you can peel an answer next turn. I don't really know a sequence that gets him out of it, but... It... Don't love... I mean, yeah, I mean, you deal with the Saga. We know from seeing here that Chris has a second Saga in hand. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Ryan's definitely... Uh... Feeling the squeeze right now. I mean, that's what the hammer deck does, right? They get you with the super fast combo. Like, imagine playing its infect, right? They get they have the the fast kills where they get you on two or three with a glistener elf or a blighted agent, a couple pump spells. Um, but they didn't have the ability to go wide and go late. Like, if you had a bunch of spy removal, you were often able to to knock off uh, their aggression. Like some of some of the more uh, backbreaking games that I've seen Tom Ross play with Infect involved winning with a Dried Arbor, but that was so rare. And now we just have Urza Saga as our backup plan. That's crazy. Yeah, and there we do see the, the wear tear on the hammer. Did he call the Ryan Hayes play? Wow, uh, great minds. <laughs> Dude, if, if Ryan does the thing that I suggest, I, I know that it's right. right? I just know that it's right. <laughs> All right. Oh, we're going to knock off the Teferi. What's the Pithy Needle for? Yeah, that's uh, an interesting line. I thought you might want to shut off that Fiery Islet, but now we're just going to go for a second Sanctifier on Vec. Yeah, uh, I'm into it. 
You have Pure Steel Paladin and Arid Mesa being the leftovers for Chris as Ryan takes a draw and finds a Scalding Tarn. Yep. Yesterday I was facing down multiple Sanctifier Invex in the second round of FNM, and uh, it's not fun. Thing is uh, very hard to beat. As the person who more often than not controls the Sanctifier on Vex, I'm okay with that card. <gasps> well, we found Injure Explosives, but I don't... Oh, we do have a land. We can go to one. We can fetch a basic. We found it. We found Amazing. it. Amazing. Incredible. We, we've seen that copy of Engineer Explosives be incredibly good for Chris. Uh, uh, sorry, for uh, Ryan over the course of the tournament so far. Yeah. I think that there are two, but if there's only yeah, there, one... there are two. Okay. Yeah. So injured explosives is usually something you see in the Emery decks, the Emery builds of of the uh, uh, breach strategies, because with Emery it's just like a repeatable wrath effect that's just so strong. You don't see it a ton in like Merc Tide. You usually see dress downs, but um, injured explosives has just been off the wall good for Ryan Hayes all day. And there he found it off the iteration, had just enough mana to play and activate it, and now we're stabilizing at one life. I've got a question here from chat saying that they can see you in the mirror. Do the players hear the commentary? No, we're we're in a separate yeah. room. Soundproof here. booth. Now I will say we are talking a little under loudly. I don't know how to say that. I'm quiet. Quite, quite we are talking less than loud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how you say that. Mm -hmm. um, because if we start hollering, they'll know that something's up because they can hear hollering. But uh, but yeah. Yeah, it's actually not a mirror you're seeing us through. That's just a window into the booth. <laughs> yeah, a window into the soundproof booth. We even have some soundproof mechanisms in here. It's true. As for Sentinels, the play for Hafner. Let's see if he can rebuild. Has Saga. The Rogvan comes in. Maybe Ryan needs the mana. Maybe he's baiting an activation so he can do something here. Hafner going to go ahead and fetch. Seems like Saga activation is the play. Yeah, uh, I mean, that Saga is going to spit out a 3-3 three, three here. Uh, and I think that what we're likely to see here on Chris's turn is that Saga finding a Shadow Spear. Uh, giving Trample in this scenario is likely uh, what Chris is hoping for. And the extra power from something like a Hammer not necessarily going to matter with Ryan and Walmart. Yeah, I think the... Um... So here we're making a blocker, and I think Ryan wants Hafner to block. Otherwise, you wouldn't attack, right? Like, um, and if a block happens with either creature, I think Hayes is fine because Bolt takes care of the other one. Well, I think the the alternative may be that if Ryan Ryan's only out may have been uh, ah. simply because the fairy in his hands turned off. Yep. It looks like the other cards are Ragavan and a Lightning Bolt. Uh, the bolt's gonna, uh, yeah, we might have seen the bolt take care of the construct. But... Well, bolt can now hit the Esper Sentinel, and that kills both, right, with two damage uh, on it because it's only a right. three-three. Yep. And then you, we can pay for Esper Sentinel, and then we can play a post-combat Ragavan. And while the Saga can activate again, there's no creature for it to 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 do that to, right? Yeah, we'll go ahead and see if that is the line that Ryan was taking here. He picked up another Dragon's Rage Channeler off of that Fiery Iowit activation. Now, that might be a better play here than the Raghavan, since it does give you a Surveil. And maybe he knew that he had the mana extra, so he could dig a card deeper and look for exactly Dragon Race Channel. Or potentially a better play than the Lightning Bolt. Like, maybe there's a different removal spell that you wanted to play. But right now, oh, maybe he didn't He didn't see it. That's tough. Yep, that's a pass of the turn. Yeah, with only three artifacts on the battlefield... Two damage on the construct. A bolt on the Esper Sentinel would have knocked it off. Maybe there's no bolt in hand. Maybe I misread. I'm pretty sure there is, but I could be wrong. Well, I'm going to go give him the guff after this round. Don't worry. Like if, you right. want, if you want to turn uh, with iron into steel, you got to work it. That's true. All right. We can see another construct being made here. Urza Saga going searching. Ginger Brute, the find. Um, <clears throat> anything got haste over there, buddy? <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think that's a good one. You got any hasters in chat? Well, Bolt might save the day here in a spot with looks kind of bad. Maybe Ryan is the most brain genius player on the planet. Maybe 
this was all intentional because Ginger Brute was lethal, and I just didn't think about it. Yeah, very possible. All right, so now the tokens are 5-5, five five, so almost assuredly going to have to chump block one. Bolt actually turns on Dragon Race Channelers to be delirious, too, so they grow. So we could do, like, a double block on the Construct, block the Esper Sentinel with the Raghavan, Bolt the Ginger Brute, and then we only lose one DRC, and the board shrinks. That wow. looks like the play. Ryan might have just won a game that I don't think I would have won, and that's impressive stuff. Now, he hasn't won the game. The match is still going, but it looks like he might be getting out of one of the worst situations I've seen in a minute with a sequence that is not intuitive. Yeah, this is just excellent play from Ryan. These players know each other, too. He had to have known about the Ginger Brute, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. He either missed the Construct shrinking with the Bolt, or he knew Ginger Brute was coming and he was at one. And I'm going to lean on the latter. Prismatic ending, the draw, takes care of the last creature on the other side of the table. Dragon Race Channel are going to start churning in, and you are potentially seeing a champion in the making. Ryan Hayes won our last event, and he is looking for 4-0, a top deck, pure steel paladin, and a giver of runes, and we're going back Ryan Hayes' as well. Oh, that's a big giver answers. of runes. That's a big giver of runes. Well, any creature is tough because DRC has to attack, so we're going to need... Some answers here. That's a ledger shredder and a pass. That's not going to be good enough unless there's another answer to follow up with, and blacksmith skill is going to cut off that out. All right, we're going to go for protection for blue and attack, and Ryan Hayes loses the game. Was that the match? I uh, don't did we believe have... so. Oh, uh, we're updating the... Okay, uh, Brick, Brick was updating the games backwards, so Ryan actually got whooped 2-0. Yes, Hafner yes. takes it down. Yep. Hafner moving to 4-0 with... Uh, his build of blue white hammer and an almost incredible comeback from Ryan Hayes, and we see him just barely, barely get beat by that hammer deck in game number two with some really impressive play. Yeah, that that was just a an absolute clinic of a game on both sides. Yeah, like both players played that game incredibly well, and I'm sure we're going to see more from both of these players as we head down the stretch uh, of this tournament.